fan of Super Bowl props, but not in Las Vegas for the big game. Hosting a Super Bowl party and want to keep everyone entertained? Way to Talk has you covered with our Super Bowl party prop sheet. The concept is simple and is easy for anyone to participate and follow. First, download and print out our Super Bowl 56 party prop sheet. Pass out to everyone at your Super Bowl party and determine the entry fee, if any, and payouts. All they have to do is circle their choices for each prop. And since almost all of them are 50-50, it does not require someone to be a huge football fan or understand sports betting to participate. To get your free Super Bowl party prop sheet, just go to wt.buzz slash props and follow us on Twitter at WagerTalk the day of the big game to get results in real time. Welcome in and a very happy Wednesday to you. Middle of the week, February the 9th. Huh? Where is the time going? We've got 50, count them, 50 college hoops games uh, on tap here tonight. A lot to go over. We've narrowed it down. we got three games that uh, we're going to see if we can find some edges for you here. We're going to do it with three of the finest here on this Wednesday as we welcome back in the captain's chair, Drew Martin, continuing to rock and roll in college hoops guys and there's uh trig coming off a uh, count up sweep at uh evening i believe congrats uh as uh, trig continues to cash those tickets back on track and of course the prop god super bowl just around the corner mid-major matt matt joseph nobody's got better super bowl props than he does guys over at sportsmemo.com and his finger on the pulse which is why we call him mid-major matt on just about every mid-major program in college hoops gentlemen welcome in and uh on this wednesday here drew what do we got uh what do we got rolling heading into what should be a ridiculous uh weekend yeah joe i mean college basketball at the forefront the super bowl this weekend so it's i i actually think it's a great time to be betting college basketball with a lot of the odds makers focusing on the super bowl props things of that nature so uh, looking to get after it this week and actually off of a loss last night and looking to bounce back today. So I, not, I'm, I'm kind of hung over for today's show, but it's not due to drinking, Joe. It's because I lost my, my bet last night and Auburn went down as well on the road in Fayetteville against Arkansas. Yeah. But hey, that Arkansas team, what they're winning with nine or 10 straight. Uh, this is a team I'm not wanting to step in front of. So, hey, maybe look to bet on. Ooh, pig suey. Mmm, disgusting. I know. Well, it's still better than betting the NBA, where chalk is ass is ruling right now. Uh, talk to me here, Trey. What is going on uh, in college hoops? I believe 2 0 night last night. Congrats, brother. What do you got tonight for us? Yeah, Joe, I needed that. Had a 2 0 night on Monday as well. So, four straight winners heading in, into tonight. Uh, I'm going to take a shot with a 5% play, a game I love. Uh, that's up on my page now. And actually, hopefully we'll have five in a row going into that play because the, the five percenter goes at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to have another one that goes at 7 Eastern, and I'm going to give that out on the show free. So hopefully we can stay hot and keep this run going. All right, let's keep it going here. Mid-major, Matt, uh, I know you're excited, man. Super Bowl just around the corner. Uh, you crushed it last year for clients uh, with the prop betting here, and I know yeah, uh, you've got that Super Bowl prop package available, I believe, over at SportsMemo.com. What's rolling in uh, college hoops? Yeah, and what's rolling is Toledo team total overs. Oh. I mean, uh, it's it's like seven or eight in a row, and the one that they didn't get, it was because a walk on missed a layup late. It was just this team's just a, a lot of fun to bet. They're going to Northern Illinois on Saturday. We'll bet it once again. We'll take the profits from all the other ones and roll them into that one, but. Toledo is just, you know, this is the time of year, especially in the mid-major land, we really figure out who the best teams are. Vermont, Toledo, South Dakota State, and they're just going to keep rolling offensively until they face a good team. And even then, they're just going to keep rolling. So these team total overs have been looking good lately. Uh, love the Rockets as of late. Yeah, it's, uh, can't go wrong. Another winner last night, cha-ching. And we'll see if we can't roll those winners into a few here tonight, guys. And we're going to start 
talking with uh, a little Seton Hall taking on uh, Xavier, two very confusing teams. Uh, Seton Hall opens up as a three-point favorite here with the total right around uh, 141. You know, at, there were points in the season, Drew, with both of these teams where you were like, wow, uh, you know, this could be – this team could really get it rolling. And then they both kind of hit a brick wall. So what do you think between Xavier and Seton Hall tonight? What are we going to get? Sure, Joe. Actually, sidewise, I think it's really tricky. I, I kind of skated away from that. But uh, totals-wise, I actually like this. Uh, of all the three games – Xavier and Seton Hall under the total is uh, the best bet I like. 141 and a half looks to be the high water mark. You might be actually be able to find a 142 looking at the wager talk odd screen, guys. But I like it under for a couple reasons here, Joe. When you look at uh, both of these two teams, they're over under statistics for the year. They're both over 65% to the under. Seton Hall 7 and 13 uh, trending under and also Xavier 8 and 14 trending to the under as well. And Xavier especially slowed pace once they once they got into conference play. And actually their last four games, all averaging 65 possessions or less. And in 11 conference games, only two of those conference games actually exceeding the 70 possession mark. So for whatever reason, when they've gotten into conference, they slowed down the pace. That's one of my favorite profiles to bet to the under. And on the other side of things, Seton Hall, each of their last three games, 70 possessions or lower, both teams' top 40 defensive efficiency teams in the country. I don't think we get to the 140s here, Joe. I think it's a lower possession game. And uh, under 141 and a half, we can get pretty much widely available right now. Xavier Seton Hall under the total for me, Joe. All right. Going total-wise in, uh, in this one, uh, Trig, uh, you know, I mean, DePaul doesn't win on the road, except I guess if they're visiting uh, Xavier. they got to be a little pissed off here. Seton Hall. Back-to-back -back wins here. Maybe they've righted the ship. What do you think we're going to get tonight? Joe, I don't know how you can bet this game until you know if uh, Bryce Aiken is playing or not. That I really think that you have to know his status uh, or at least be pretty certain about it before you bet this game. The reason, Seton Hall, for me, absolute fade with him out of the lineup. Uh, I know they've won a couple of late, uh, but, but their offensive efficiency has dropped considerably with Aiken out of the lineup. And they're just not a team that I'm going to lay points with against a, a team like Xavier, who even though they are pretty much a fade for me, uh, coming off that loss, getting points, seems like a spot where I would probably look to bet Xavier. But I'm not going to bet against Seton Hall um, if Aiken is in. To Drew's point, you know, Seton Hall has become much more of an under team with Aiken out. So if Aiken is out, I would probably look to, you know, maybe continue to just ride the unders with Seton Hall because their their offense really just has not been been great with him not, you know, not in the lineup. Uh, and he, you know, you can kind of take a look at the last few games. He hasn't played uh, since January 15th, which was a game, I believe it was at Marquette, uh, a game that Seton Hall, uh, I believe they lost even with him in there. I think he had like 28 points in the game. So. Just not enough info here right now, but the, the, the line sort of suggests that he might play. Uh, I thought the line was high being up at three, and now it's like three and a half some places. So if he were to play, I wouldn't want to be on Xavier. And if he plays, Seton Hall's offense is better. So I really think you need to know his status before you fire anything. In this game. Yep, five straight games, still in the concussion protocol, but nothing yet here. Uh, mid-major, Matt, but Kadari Richmond has really stepped up here in those uh, five games that Aiken has been out. Uh, pretty good. Learn a little bit something uh, different about him and this team with just him in the lineup. Do you trust them in this spot here against Xavier? I, I don't trust either of them. I mean, before the season, this would have been a really good game because you look at what Xavier brought back, you look at what Seton Hall brought back, and look, I think Seton Hall was a contender for, you know, Sweet 16 Elite 8 before the season because their roster looked really good, and then, you know, Bryce Aiken gets hurt, and they've just been underwhelming, and you look at Kadari as of late, you know, the turnover issue has been a problem for him, and it's, you know, 
he hasn't been a full-time point guard. I mean, basically, he wasted his time at Syracuse, unfortunately. He comes over now, and he's kind of that backup guy, and now he's getting the limelight here. And, you know, like the other guys said, um, if he, if Aiken's out, I, I agree with the under here. I think the under is the way to go. Seton Hall, you know, has struggled to score, but they're, they're playing better defense. And any team that loses at home to DePaul, like, that's losing at home to LaSalle. That's like losing at home to, like, insert your bad team here. So Xavier, in theory, should be excited and motivated for this game, but... That I mean, so many odd results on both sides. The under would be the only way to play this one, I think. All right. Well, keep in mind here, those of you guys that like uh, trends, Xavier has now trailed at the half in seven of their last eight games. So starting slowly is something Xavier loves to do for some reason, and it cost them last week against DePaul. They just could not get it done in the second half. Now we'll move on to another game. Should be very interesting here as the Houston Cougars. Next stop, SMU. What's the difference? They're pretty much rolling over everyone here. Six and a half is an opening number. The total, 136 and a half here. And, man, there's a lot to like about this Houston team, uh, Trick. The question is, uh, do you like them on the road against SMU? Well, the, que the question first for me, Joe, is how they can just continue to cover games with without half their team, basically. Uh, I just can't figure it out. Like, they lose Marcus Sasser, and I think they've, like, covered, like, four of their last five, maybe five of their last six, something like that. Uh, just demolished Cincinnati over the weekend. Like, it's, it's the, you know, it, it just, I think the one game they didn't cover was Tulane. They still won that game pretty convincingly, so... You know, it's really difficult to go against Houston right now because it looks like this team is just that deep. Uh, they, you know, it's just next guy up for the Cougars. Uh, but the, if we're talking about a spot here, like it's SMU, I mean, you really can't ask for a better spot for SMU. The problem is, for me at least personally, SMU has kind of been a, a fade for me as well. I mean, they got absolutely destroyed over the weekend by Wichita State. Still kicking myself for leaving Wichita State off my card. Uh, but if for this game in particular, like SMU is going to have to hit threes, in my opinion, um, to, to be able to stay within this number. That's always kind of difficult against Houston, uh, who can obviously defend and defend well. Houston's also going to take away one of SMU's typical advantages, which is rebounding. Uh, SMU has the rebounding advantage against most teams they play. They're not going to have it here. So, you know, unless Kendrick Davis goes off in this game, it could be one of those games that's close for a while, but Houston, you know, kind of creates their distance uh, down the stretch. Uh, just because of the spot, I would lean toward SMU here, but I, I haven't had very much luck getting involved in Houston games this year, and I won't be getting involved in this. Uh, it's kind of crazy. You know, we're all looking to fade them, Matt, once the injuries uh, became uh, apparent. But nope, they're 5-1 uh, they're and one on the road. Going to SMU, uh, who's coming off of that loss to Wichita State on the road. Now, they do like being home, though, 11-0. and I think they've got a 13-game winning streak in Dallas. So what do you do here, uh, Matt? You get in front of the Houston train? Well, so here's the thing when you look at Houston. If you're an opponent against Houston, you have to be able to shoot, and you have to be able to rebound. And SMU is a pretty good shooting team, but they're not very good at rebounding, and they turn it over quite a bit, which, you know, Houston's not exactly one of those Havoc-style press defenses, but that's not exactly a good recipe here for the upset. You look at uh, SMU, they're eighth in uh, uh, preventing off, or excuse me, they're eighth in offensive rebounds uh, so far in AAC play. And you look at last year, last year they got blasted in both games with relatively the same roster that, that Houston had last year, and that was a worst Houston team at the time because they had all the healthy guys that they don't have this year. Um, the Cougars also can't hit free throws. Their free throw percentage is really bad. So that's the one kind of thing in these games where you need free throws to salt things away. That could be a little bit of an issue. Um, I would lean to SMU. I think it's a little bit too many points here. I, I think the Mustangs have the offense to be able to get some things going, but the problems become... If Houston starts playing volleyball and they miss a bunch of shots and they get the offensive rebounds, that's going to wear down SMU. Um, so the lean would be to the home team here. I think it's just a bit too many points. You do remember Houston barely beat Tulsa at Tulsa. They barely mm -hmm. beat Temple at Temple. So those are two games that were, you know, look, we see a better team at Houston uh, SMU than those two. But I lean to the home team in this one. Not my best bet. Nothing too spectacular here. But I think SMU's the side here.
Yeah, our producer Robert saying they also barely lost unfairly to Alabama. Uh, <clears throat> that was in the bucket. <laughs> uh, Drew, uh, talk to me here, man. Uh, the total seems to be coming down in the marketplace from that 136 and a half, 134 and a half uh, popping up. Uh, we're seeing sevens too. Is it too rich for your blood or is Houston the spot for you? You know, a full touchdown is is getting up there. I think we're being taxed on Houston here, Joe. Um, you know, you bring up the loss to Alabama. They also lost to Wisconsin. So losing to an SEC and a Big Ten team by uh, what each of those games by one possession each. So, it, you know, their two losses aren't exactly bad. And what, 20 wins? I mean, I'm not looking to step in front of Houston, Joe. They, they've won 12 straight. They've covered four of their last five. They're a top 10 offensive and defensive efficient team here. So the stepping in front of teams like the Cougars is just a really tough ask for me. And SMU, you know, spot wise, this is something we talked about on Monday, you know, spot wise in college basketball. Has it really mattered? Well, if it does, it points towards SMU here off of a road loss coming back home and Houston off of the back-to-back -back road games here. They just played uh, at Cincinnati over the weekend. So it could be kind of a tough spot here for Houston. Look, Joe, if you made me bet it, I would lay the seven. But if there is one thing that the Cougars struggle with, it's hitting their free throws. They're under 70% from the uh, charity stripe this year. So covering a foul fest area of seven, that's what kept me off of it. But if you made me bet it, I'd be on the Cougs. All right. Liking the, uh, liking the Cougs in, uh, in this one. Should be, should be fun. We'll learn a little something. SMU taking on Houston tonight. Uh, we'll move on to our third uh, preview here. And, uh, wow, look at that, a little bowl. We're going Drake minus two at home, taking on Missouri State. 143 is an opening total here. Mid-major, Matt, I believe Drake coming off of that uh, overtime loss to Northern Iowa. Uh, now they're uh, taking on uh, Missouri State. And what do you think about this line? And what do you think about uh, the Bulldogs' chances of getting it done at home? So I, I, for the people who used to watch the baseball show all the time, I talked about how Oakland to the athletics were the team that I couldn't figure out. I always get their bets wrong. Missouri State's the team in college basketball, and it, it kind of goes back to this game last year when you had a Drake team that was coming off a three-week COVID pause. The game was in Missouri State. Missouri State was up 17 in the first half. It looked like an easy winner. And then they blew the game in the second half, and not only did they blow the game, they didn't cover. It was uh, it, Drake ran away, and then Drake beat them again the next game. And you look at the first meeting between these two, Drake was the one that had a really big lead against Missouri State, blew it on the road and lost 61-56 to here. I like Drake at home. Uh, I think this is a very efficient team when you look at them offensively. And um, I, you know, Missouri State is one of these teams it's very hard to figure out. They lose that game at home against Loyola Chicago. Big game in their mind. You have to wonder if there's some sort of residue that comes off that. They lost that game at Indiana State. This is a team with Gage Prim that has a lot of talent. The Mosley's kid's really good. Uh, Patterson's really good. They have some good talent here. But, you know, it's hard not to back Drake at home with a short number, considering they were up so big on Missouri State on the road and just let the lead go. Uh, I think you could go with like a Drake money line here. It's juice tolerance once again when it comes to that sort of thing. But I think Drake gets the win at home here. Missouri State is a hard team to figure out. They're best. They're the best team in the Missouri Valley. But at their worst, they're down with like Evansville and, and Valparaiso. It, it's tough. I mean, usually when you look at uh, Drake games, uh, Drew, you, sometimes you're looking at the over because sometimes they're expecting points, especially with them at home, but I, I'm, I'm with him. I can't figure out uh, this team either. And uh, Missouri State should be a better team, but do you trust them to get the job done uh, on the road against Drake here? Um, sidewise, I would probably go with Missouri State. I mean, talking about Drake here, Joe, is, is what they're a team that's six and 15 against the spread on the season, and you're wanting to lay a hook on the three. I know they're at home, but I, I just don't like that kind of profile here. So, uh, Missouri State, 17 and 8 straight up on the year, 14 and 10 to the over. I mean, both of the trends kind of point towards this game going over the total, but you bring it up in terms of uh, question marks on the on the Drake side of things. So not a game that I bet, Joe, but um, if you made me bet it, I'd probably be on the dog here, plus the three and a half. Drake has been a uh, great fade all season long. Yeah, uh, 13 and 11 on the season, uh, Missouri, but you mentioned 6 and 15. My good. There was a time, mid-major, Matt, not that Drake was an instant cover. Feels like a uh, hundred years ago, but uh, they used to be a really good uh, cash cow when it came to that. Uh, all right, so we got uh, three here. Talk to me, uh, Trig. 
with this game here with Drake, Missouri State rematch. Uh, you know, sometimes that's all you need is uh, motivation to put you over the edge. Do you trust uh, Missouri State to go into Drake and handle it? Well, Joe, first I just have to say, I can't believe Matt brought up last season. I had a huge play on Missouri State in that game. <laughs> and the collapse, I, I, I haven't thought about that in a while. But Matt brought it up. And, and he also bring, brought up a good point. Missouri State's kind of that team for me, too, where I have them rated probably higher than most people do. But I just can't seem to figure out the right time to jump in with them. I'm happy I was real close to jumping in with them over the weekend, and I didn't. And that, that proved to be a good decision because they, they ended up losing to Loyola Chicago. But I'll tell you right now, I'm not betting against Drake right now. And I know Drew referenced their poor against the spread record this year. But I think you have to, to really take into account how banged up Drake was for the, the majority of the season up until recently. And recently, until the weekend, they, they had really been playing better, covering numbers. I think they had won four straight. Uh, and then they lose a tough game to Northern Iowa in overtime over the weekend. Now they come off that loss. Drake's been a lot better at home. And I think you're getting Drake a slightly discounted here uh, because of what happened early in the season. But the, a lot of those results came with Roman Penn banged up, with Tank Hemphill banged up. So for me, Drake's actually kind of like the value side here, in my opinion, just in general going forward now, now that they're healthier. But I don't want to lay points against a Missouri State. I, I at least think or, or feel can be better than they are. Um, so I've got to stay out of this one. It, it's kind of the, the other end of the spectrum for me. You got, I get C Seton Hall Xavier, two teams that I can't really figure out. I don't want to bet on. These are two teams that I kind of do want to bet on. They're paired against each other. Uh, so I got to, I got to, I got to just stay out of this one slightly into Drake because they're at home. All right. Leaning towards uh, Drake, uh, 142 is a total here, guys. We'll see if uh, both have been profitable to the over this year. Low scoring first game. We'll see if they can get up and over the total in this one at 142. All right. So 50 games here, guys, in total on the card. Uh, we talked about these three. Now let's see if there's one these guys uh, like maybe a little bit more than the rest. So, uh, Drew, hit us up, man. Ta start us off. Where are you looking here on the card tonight? Sure, Joe. Yeah, I did like that Xavier Seton Hall under the total um, for Houston SMU and Missouri State Drake guys. I probably won't be involved in those two games, but for the best bet for the show, you know, I do have my best bet up at wagertalk.com, but another game that I bet personally here, Georgia and Florida in the SEC guys, I'm looking to go over the total in this one, Joe. Um, mainly due to to the Bulldogs defensively. Um, look, I know that they held Auburn to, what, 74 points when they played, but Auburn was like six for, I don't know, 28 from three-point land. So I think they kind of got a little bit more lucky in, in holding a team like that, uh, a little bit lower scoring of a game. Georgia is the worst defensive team in the SEC. A bunch of teams just racking up points against them. We saw Arkansas almost go for triple digits against them. Now, Florida under Mike White, they got they did get Colin Castleton back. So watch out for that, guys. I think that's going to help their two-point percentage tonight, putting up some easier baskets against the Bulldogs. I think we get a higher tempo, te tempo game because that's the only way Georgia can stay in this one, Joe. And uh, for that, I like the uh, Gators and the Bulldogs and the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, college basketball style over the total tonight for my best bet, Joe. All right, going up and over a 20-8 and eight run. Uh, that is what Drew is on at College Hoops, guys. Uh, red, hot, make sure you go grab that best bet tonight for him. Uh, and Trey, talk to us here, man. Where are, you, uh, where are you looking on this card tonight? Well, Joe, you know I'm not going to show up empty-handed if I don't like any of the games we talk about you know, during the show. I'm going to bring something that I actually did bet. And so this is my 4% play for me tonight. And I'm going with the George Mason Patriots on the money line, uh, which I think is minus 110, minus 115 right now. Uh, this one's kind of bounced around the number all day. Uh, I think it might be minus one George Mason. So I like the money line here. Listen, this is going to start with whether Josh Adoro plays or not. Uh, my hunch is that he is. The sort of the, the info that I got yesterday on West Virginia ended up being right with Taz Sherman. Uh, same source ha has a... Pretty, pretty good hunch that he might play. So I think that's key for George Mason. But if he doesn't, I still think George Mason has a great chance to win this game. This is a rematch of a game that just happened two nights ago um, in, in a game that George Mason played at. The game was at Richmond. 
George Mason took it right down to the wire, ended up losing on a buzzer beater three, uh, 52-49. George Mason was at four and one in A-10 play at one point. And their last three losses, a double overtime loss to St. Louis, a loss to LaSalle, which was a one-point game with a minute to go, and then, of course, the buzzer beater three to Richmond. All games that really, I mean, with a bounce or two, could have gone their way. Uh, I do like the revenge aspect. Richmond just beat them two nights ago. Now this game is in Fairfax at George Mason where, you know, George Mason's got a first-year coach, Kim English, former University of Missouri standout. Uh, who's really trying to rally this fan base, get people to show up at the games. Uh, I think he gave like his personal ticket allotment out during the St. Louis game just to try to fill the arena. Uh, And and it's sort of working. I mean, they're eight and two at home this season. They've been really good against the spread at home, um, you know, this year, sort of dating back to last year. From a matchup perspective, Richmond, you know, the Spiders, they they can be beaten. Team's a a dismal rebounding team. Um, And and I, I just think, in a back-to-back situation, having just played, they could get out-hustled by George Mason here, who will be in their own building where they've played better this year. So I'm going to take a shot here. George Mason on the money line. I'll tell you right now, if Oduro, Oduro plays, this is going to shoot up. So I'm going to bet it right now and take a chance on George Mason, but I think they get it done either. All right. Thanks there, Rod. Leaning that way here. What do you think, uh, mid-major Matt? Where are you looking here tonight on the card? Well, as somebody in the chat said, um, you're going with a mid-major, right? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not tonight. I actually think, and look, the spot play, the, the, the spot plays as of late have not been guaranteed. We looked the past couple of days, I think the West Virginia Texas Tech game, everybody thought Texas Tech was going to come in, lay an egg. They did for the first half. They won the game. So these things are not guarantees, but I mean, I'm not a big Alabama guy. I, I think Alabama is overrated. I think they get up for the big games, and I think that's about it. And if you're telling me the last stretch, they've played Baylor, Auburn, and Kentucky, and then they've got Arkansas at home on Saturday, who everybody loves because they won a game at home, uh, what's their focus going to be for a game at Mississippi here? And look, I don't love the fact that Mississippi's without uh, Deshaun Ruffin, but they just had a game without him, and Jarkel Joyner's back. And so that's going to be a big help. And you look at some what they've done as of late. Five-point overtime loss at Florida. Uh, They beat LSU on the road. They beat Kansas State at home. They beat Florida at home, Mississippi State at home. They beat Dayton at home in non-conference. So they're not a bad team at home. I think they're going to make things a little bit ugly for Alabama here. Um, And you're getting six. And I think that's a really good number here. There's some five and a halfs out there, but there are some sixes out there. So make sure to shop around. I think there's a little chance that Mississippi wins outright tonight. I don't trust uh, um, this Alabama team. Remember, they lost at Missouri. They lost at Georgia already, and those are two of the worst teams, if not the two worst teams in the SEC. Give me uh, Ole Miss tonight plus the six. Um, I think they go, and there's a chance they beat the Crimson Tide outright tonight. All right, man. Sticking it to Alabama here tonight. Drew smiled a little bit, though, when you were saying that there. All right, so let's see what our friends from the Gold Sheet have in store for us tonight. And they're going to be looking at Southern Illinois taking on Northern Iowa. They are expecting points, points, and more points. They're going over in this matchup here uh, tonight, guys. And make sure you read this. We post them. On the Wager Talk Twitter page after uh, after every show, guys, Gold Sheet Play of the Day. Great write-up and great handicapping tools available to you over at thegoldsheet.com. We would certainly encourage you guys to head over there and check it out. All right, I'm going to head to the uh, ACC uh, tonight, and I'm going to take a team that I think is uh, probably one of the more under the radar, and uh, speaking of under radar, make sure you check out Drew's new show, by the way, on the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe he'll talk about Wake Forest, uh, because not a lot of people are, and yet they continue to roll uh, in the ACC and talk about a team going the wrong way. Hello, North Carolina State. Uh, they have been abysmal, too. I think one in six straight up and against the number guys in their last seven. Uh, they're also 3-11 and 11 in their last 14 against the number, taking on a team that's really starting to come into their own. So I'll lay the short number. It's on the road, but I don't care. Give me the better team. Wake Forest laying three against NC State here tonight. And don't forget, guys, of course, best bets. Drew mentioned it. His best bet is up at wagertalk.com. Mid-major Matt at Sports Memo. Triggs ready to go also at wagertalk.com. And couple them with these as... Drew is looking for his best bet tonight. Georgia, Florida over 143. Welcome back, Colin Castleton. 
Adam Trigger, George Mason, give him the money line. He doesn't care at home. He likes him against Richmond, uh, minus 115 on the money line. Matt Joseph's uh, in a surprise, not going with a mid-major. He's going with Ole Miss, mostly because he hates Alabama, but he'll take the six. I'm going to go Wake Forest laying the three, and our friends from the gold sheet, Southern Illinois, University of Northern Iowa, expect points over one 32 in that matchup. Guys, don't forget to hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. Make some plans to join us again tomorrow. We'll do it all over again as we get ready for a crazy weekend uh, in college hoops. But much more between now and then to get to. I uh, hope you'll go and visit all of these guys, uh, Trig and Drew at Wager Talk, Mid-Major, Matt, of course, over at SportsMemo.com. Until tomorrow, guys, best of luck with your plays tonight. We'll talk to you then. Good luck. Celebrate with Teddy Covers as he hits the 50,000 plateau on Twitter. Right now, you can get a seven-day all-access pass for only $50 using coupon code TC50 when checking out on Teddy's seven-day pass. That's seven days for less than a three-day package and $49 savings from regular seven-day all-access price, coming to just $7.14 per day. To redeem this special, go to Teddy's homepage at either Wager Talk or Sports Memo and use coupon code TC50 when checking out for his seven-day all-access pass.